Well, good morning to everyone again. And uh, the rainy day, we had some nice shining. Everybody would like to be outside, I guess, right? So let's enjoy the rain. So just imagine you walk into the hospital. And your loved one is treated for a problem which you're coming to speak to the doctor, physician, the staff. And they're saying to you, sorry, we have no options for you because all the options was used. All we left to, even the some options we had, something was used to be treated so easy, so quick. Now, we're having problems. And the option we have, which is last option, we cannot use because of sometimes treatment could be worse than disease. And that's the situation we'd like to bring it up at this point. When we're talking about antimicrobial resistance, when they, they, another pseudonym, they call them a super bugs. It's just something I'm talking about. It's current problem, ongoing right now. And it's unfortunate upcoming of our future. By 2050, we consider 10 million deaths every year. If this problem wouldn't be decided now or near the future. Even if it's much more than most common disease called cancer, currently it's prevailed over the statistical point. And this one coming up really one of those dangerous and upcoming problems. CDC brought up this <coughs> to the community to attention to medical field. It's just I put down the tip of the iceberg of statistics. If you log into cdc.gov, you're going to have a five pages those type of super bugs. It's not the nature taking over us. I guess we were too relaxed and too comfort zone of just going after chasing them bacteria. And in comfort zone, well, we got to this link, other groups, easy to be destroy them. Well, they're over getting smarter. Nature has dynamic moves compared to us. We get to the next point. And then this we come. So well, Nodule, it's a startup company here in the United States, but it's not a startup team who've been in the field of medical field. It's a group of team, scientists, bioengineering, biomedical, computer engineering, who are having minimum two PhDs behind their shoulders. And this team got together. That's the good news. And we came up with, amongst the other expertise of the company, we have synergistic combination, generic drugs, one of our expertise. And we developed a pharmaceutical composition with unique application to those generic existing drugs we use for something else. We found out how to put them together and work for us in different field. And those, as we call this, the medical field, unmet needs as I just spoke about antimicrobial resistance. Well, this is our team, it's just few of us on the, on the screen, but the, behind this scene, it's a big group which is working hard and dedicated and have that really uh, influential what we're going to do. And we have a great advisors, which is few now put down for prestigious institution. One of them like a SUNY downstate, now signing and so on. Well, this is MDR, multi-drug resistant gram-negative bacteria, as I mentioned before, multi-drug, not one, not two, multi-drugs. And this is approaches, I just put few of them, there's a much more approaches, they're trying to, everyone right now, trying to prevent it as soon as possible, because 2050, just the statistical, could happen any time. So, they have different approaches, NIH, National Institute of Health, they're using probiotics even. Probiotics, what was they use? They're trying to do, maximize their effort. They're using, as we call that, pistol against the tank, which is still choice, not the best, but still choice, having to put together. Polymixin. Why we chose polymixin? It wasn't us, our choice. That was a choice of NIH, and they research as last resort for gram-negative bacteria. Multi-drug, and now they have HDR, which stands for extremely drug resistant. There's 
and nothing beat those bacteria. Well, polymixin is nothing new for the like a medical field. It's been came up on the market in 1947 after World War II. That's where the penicillin and all it goes booming of the antibiotics era. Only unfortunate part was nephrotoxicity, the toxicity to the kidneys. So they put an antibiotic on the site because they come up with much less toxic antibiotics and they use them over the years, comfortably, efficiently, and relaxing. That's what we did. Nature didn't relax. Well, nature came up, as I said, multi-drug resistance. We have no choice, last resort. We have a sick patient, so sick that kidney don't function well, and you're giving an antibiotic gonna kill patient or disease. Now you don't know who's first. Well, you're gonna cure the disease together with the patient. Good job. So they tried to do polymixing intravenously with different dosages, different timing, every eight hours, every 12 hours, once a day, and so on. Didn't work. They tried to purify polymixin with all chemical uh, adjustments and methods. They tried to give intravenously, intramuscular, subcutaneously, still didn't work, unfortunately. They tried to even go through the immobilized hemoperfusion. They blend the blood, they put again, they took all the possible approach to save patient life, not to kill it, but still failing. And these are all the articles that's come up with those approaches. Well, Even, yes. Okay. What failure means? What do you mean under failure? Fail, kidney failure. Mm -hmm. Failure, it means dysfunction. No, no, kidney dysfunction, failing. Because kidney has, our organs are not just, you have a kidney, liver does their own job, lung does their own job, no. It's entire one system, like solar system. That's the body too. So when kidneys start malfunctioning or getting toxicity on it, all the body trying to help. But the good point you just mentioned, it's just not the kidney failure, and the entire body starts failing as well. Because toxicity from the elimination kidney with functions has to do, it's not just kidney failure, it's entire system failure. That's a good point. Well, polymixin. It's well known in the uh, medical field. It has affinity, attraction, to one of the receptors on the kidney proximal tubules, one of those tubules of the kidneys. You just, it's not being his light that side, it just happened to the formula of the polymixin matching to that specific receptor. So you give injection, instead of chasing a bacteria, so they not, I mean, he does chase a bacteria, but part of it sticks to the kidneys. And megalin, which by nature created, doing their certain jobs, like retaining protein, the functioning, don't function anymore. So kidneys start failing, doesn't function. And we get toxicity, proteinuria, meaning urine in the protein in the urine, which is toxic to the tubules, and its vicious cycle goes on, and kidney fails, and the body does too. And that's the result of main effect and unfortunate side effect. Well, it's known fact, and they, a lot of companies, scientists trying to deal with it and do something about it. Well, what you can do without trees? Not much. Thank God we got the trees. And again, can scientists beat the problem? Yes, they can, without trees. They've done it all these centuries without trees. Well, but it takes much longer time. Um, and they, they come up with this, as you heard, this trial and error. They, they done it like in alchemics, the 17th century, they tried to you know, those, all those pharmaceutical or the herbalists, they put different ingredients. It's killing, if it's, did it kill it? Okay, we can use it. If you kill it, okay, sorry. I, I, that's a trial and error. So, it means if you, you play with your luck. Can you play with the luck? Sure. Do we have time? No. So we have the trees for it. Because we don't have time for it. So, and that's again, answer for the trees, you have to have a team. It's not a one person, it's not two, it's a team. So, Nojo is the only company <coughs> who uses trees for all research and development that we've ever done it till today. And trees till today, it's not a new for you guys. It's been used for in engineering, in uh, product development, technology, 
process management, management they've done a great job, nothing about it. But there's no trees used. They tried a few articles, you can look it up on, on Dr. Google, and you can find some articles. They try to put the trees as option, but never practically used up the full force of development and discovery and solving problems. That's what the tree is for. Uh, well, has been used, you know, that for different industries, and one of those like famous Samsung answer, and much more. And even the Forbes, the magazine had been talking about Samsung as well. For those who don't believe in the trees, so they have it there. Well, you cannot start the trees decision unless you have contradictions. So we have contradictions. What are the contradictions? Well, we have an issue and need to be treated. It has to be. There's the last resort. And that's the polymixin. We should treat this infectious disease. Regardless, we'll kill it or not, but there's no other choice. At least to take a chance. I don't like this word, but there's no other choice. But on the other hand, polymixin can cause kidney disease and prevent polymixin from therapeutic, uh, which is prevents from therapeutic use, as I mentioned. And another problem, as I mentioned before, they try to give different dosages. Well, they create a certain amount, has to be given, it's already done studies, humongous, billion dollars. So 500 milligrams must to cure the patient. But they cannot give that much, because it will knock out the kidney first before the cure comes. So they start giving smaller amount, bacteria is not stupid. Never consider your enemy stupider than yourself. So. That's the rule. I didn't create that rule, but that's the law. And that's what happens. Now we're getting bacteria nowadays, which is resistant to polymixin as well. But not as much yet. So that's why we still continue and we come up with a decision for the next. Well, example one, everybody knows it's monarchy, polyphyl. When you have a monocle, catamaran, trimaran, which one is much kind of stable, stronger? more functional, definitely more stability on trimaran compared to monocle. So that means, as always, there's a, you know the proverb, you can break the one stick, but put three sticks, can you break it? Yes, but much harder. So that's why his example one comes up here. Another example, there's a combination People say, oh, at times we come to the patient, oh, two engineers is good, one engineer is good, two is better, or two heads is better. Well, that's the same. Here we're talking about combination, two different, not related uh, materials, steel and concrete. What that to do? But in combination, they create the strongest, valuable, synergistic efficacy when those bridges used to be just from the wood. Or no, no, even um, iron nail or something, but here combination. And based on this, we'll explain you how we come up with the medical model. Well, everybody knows the prism um, of the trees. This is standard approach trial and error. Too long, the brick is very strong. We get to the trees, and then we come up to work conceptual problem. We get solution, and then we have a resolving solution. Well, principles. After we have the predictions, we have to approach the principle. Taking out. So what are we doing with taking out principle? So property to take out is natural toxicity, not the efficacy, right? We need to figure out how to eliminate or, oh wait, this time we just have to eliminate. That's the idea we come to, right? And how can we select only specific problems? Don't eliminate just much more than you want, just only that specific area of nephro toxicity from the polymixin. Well, other companies, they try to eliminate, they try to the purifications and that nature, but we still gonna be eliminating, but question how we will do that. Local quality. So we go from object external environment and influence a non-uniform and uh, and then different parts of the object should perform different functions. So 
We have two different objects, and they have to perform their own function, but in a local quality, when it's put together, they do the favorable effect when you put them together. But you have to know which one, whom to put together, so you get a specific, proper efficacy what you need to do. Well, in taking out in the research, removing politics and nephrotaxis that we mentioned, local quality will confirm knowledge of microbiology and focus on megalin receptor, receptor that polymixin loves to attach to, right? The blended pillow. Well, or if you know it, it's that a problem, right? So you have to figure it out. Before you give a fishes something that will help the person or help to the process, you want to put, make sure it doesn't hurt, doesn't get hurt the host body. You want to put something there so when you give that um, efficacious uh, medications, it will slip over and do the job and not to hurt the planted pillow. So we use that principle as well. Well known in the pharmaceutical industry called docking. So docking looks simple, nothing special there. Well, it's discovered quite a famous way. So we have target our receptor megalin, we call it, right? Where is that on the kidneys? And this is like a glove and bowl. And pharmaceutical, they do specific structure, make sure it fits to it. Or in this scenario, polymixin was designed for bacteria receptors. But unfortunately, it fit to the megalin as well. Well, in this type, we use it for our favor, this docking part. Meaning we have to pre-plan pillow some remedy or some combinations where we can have that combination to get to that docking before the polymixin comes over. So we can say, excuse me, it's busy. So finding the right target. We identified candidates who could be a nephroprotective, protect the kidneys. We used up 21,000 FDA, thousands, even more that are generic, meaning we can use them all. Nobody gives us, don't touch it. And out of all, we came up with 246 possible can feed to it. Two substances out of which synergistically, meaning in a favored way, can do the job as nephroprotective, we call it NGL022. And how can we do this? Manually? It's gonna be another 10 years, maybe 20. Computer-based? Sure. That's everybody loves computer now. Computer will do AI. Let's subsidize it for our brain. Not happening. So our team didn't come overnight, but they, it's years of research and development team, came up with computer modeling program software, which could analyze, analyze is not enough yet, analyze and match who can go with whom and what possi possible may happen if they go along with it. Still, you have to test it, but at least first piece, and again, it's not overnight, <laughs> it still involves microbiologists and PhDs and histopathologists to advise what that software could analyze for us. But software is our development part of the Northrop company, all new. Properties of NGL22, never protectors. We came up with compound. This component comprised from this group of phenols and methyl group. We combining of those ingredients, this much stronger have a love affinity to megalin, the receptor that Polynesian loves it too. But they said, excuse me, it's my turn. And stronger affinity and no toxicity to the kidney at all. They just happen to love to sit there and spending their time. Minimal spectrum of side effects. The dot generic which we choose hasn't had much side effects, very mild, from different groups, for different purpose, but they do a great job what we need for. And it does not touch us or affect polymixin efficacy. Mm -hmm. Polymixin still does their own job. We didn't touch none of the formulas, neither those who are generics, neither polymixin. We just found the right partners we can work with. Well, from, from the theory, we have to go to practice. Otherwise, we're never going to move on or going to solve the problem. So we took the rats, 
250 rands, after which we use existing HPLC ELISA testing. Usually we we'll use any form of we going back to the pharmaceutical again. We combine this all together. We study for 18 months. We took two groups of animals. So first group, we just give them for the mix and injection right there. No nephrop protection. Second group of animals, 30 of them, we give them with nephrop protection. So we give nephrop protectors and then you inject the polymyxin in the 45 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes or after an hour later after nephrop protector. And unfortunately those animals was has to be uh, uh, euthanized because killed because we need to get pathology sliced here. And <coughs> Three months and three months or six months later, they took the slice and looked up on the microscope and found those uh, who just put the mixing, they still keep this as a large amount of put mixing sitting there, never let it go. Those who had wish protection still have some amount, but not in toxic dose. It's better to maximize efficacy than those, those rats that live here in this bush. So, good news. So in these studies, we use a urine test where specific biomarkers, one biomarkers, NGL, this one up on top, and marker NAG. The top one, they do it, it's acute damage at this specific moment, at a specific time within two weeks. They every day drawing the urine test and running for the biomarkers. And they see what's the same, same approach, just for the mixing and for the mixing with natural protectors. And it was a yeah, 15, 15 um, animals used, yes. What is the litter down there, NKG? Microgram, microgram, the litter. Very microgram. Right, microgram. So, and by that time, they were analyzed by urine testing um, up to three to six months. This is long term. If there is any damage acutely, slightly was elevated for the mixing, but definitely on long term, Polymixin was giving big problem compared to nephroprotectors because it took some time nephroprotector to substitute the polymixin. Then we come up to just combination of two slides, just quick for you guys update. We have those are who are not alive anymore, but they help us to understand histology and what damage made from that we mentioned about proximal tubules and you know what level is damaged on. And this is group where we to the urine test, we figured out that kidneys function and animal can survive. So here we are. We got our polymixin use, last resort. We got this nephro protector for the megalin, the receptor that polymixin loves to hang around with. Not anymore. He goes to do the job. Excellent work. He does a great job for the mixing here. Kidneys happy and patient and the patient survives. That's what we want to do. Well, let's imagine one more time. Same patient, having problems, having by definition of the pharmacopoeia, pharmacology, and the medication needs to use, and he has to be <coughs> given for more than one week. So first patient on the left has no nephro protection. Does he have a chance to be treated for more than a week? Absolutely not. So, two options here. They start treatment, it's reality. I'm a practical physician, and I've seen this every day for a few, many times. They start medication, hopefully will respond within the next two, three days before kidney is knocked out. And the moment they do the blood test, kidney creatinine or function, the way it's testing out goes up, they stop the medication. So, insufficient treatment, insufficient care, and that's where we are. With nephroprotector, we have a chance to be used enough to treat the disease, not to damage the host body, the patient, and come up with good success. And again, we don't touch neither formulation, neither for mixing, neither generic. All we come up with, something they call flavor use or repurposing. There's a word they call repurposing medication. Is that, you know, has that been characterized? 
for the bacteria, amount of bacteria or uh, the amount of the dosage of, uh, or the concentration of, uh, of an antibiotic. Because obviously, if you have smaller increasing concentrations, they adapt very well. Absolutely. You just said that, right? Perfect point. That's what you just said was done beyond us even touching it, done by pharmaceuticals. Great point. Because that's where they try to do the dosages and see at what specific dosage bacteria start adapting to it or rather to be killed with it, right? So we're coming to the one of the conference. Our team came in there. Great point you just said. And this famous professor there in the infection disease, former Pfizer employee, he comes up, he does right now, you know, studies and he says like this. This is what we do. We give patient 250 milligram small dose. The treatment dose one gram. We start first day 250 three times a day and watching the patient. We increase in dose to 500 and he's watching the patient. Then we go to one gram. Somebody says, can we go at two grams? Sure. The point is here, who's gonna die first? <laughs> You're right. You can go with your dosages, there's no limit. Unfortunate part, the natural toxicity doesn't let you go beyond what you want to kill the bacteria. Because I have two dilemmas, knock out the kidneys or bacteria. But well, I have a great point, yes. They've done this and they tried to eliminate uh, bacterial resistance, no, they couldn't. Because the dosage that eliminates it, they're not capable to give. And that's where, you, where, you, where we are. So there's no way to eliminate it. This is done. It's already so many studies and publication and abstract. They still don't have an answer. They don't. And here we come. Any idea behind any idea, you have to have your IP. That's your sweat. That's your hard work. That's your team behind it. If you don't protect your team, you don't have to even start to work with it. That's why we have this IPs. And that piece must be done well. And you can imagine here, what year is here? Can you see from there? 2007, the CDC just came up with this warning last three, four years. We're talking about 2014, 15. 2007, we published. 2011, we were coming up with these issues way beyond it's come up to the public. So we already was working and being in that field prior even that was mentioned to it. Well, I just have to mention some market opportunity, just fact, what's going on, because only 12, 12 new antibiotics for five years, it's insane. It means they used to do five, six antibiotics a year, new antibiotics, not anymore. They can, cannot come up with the choices, with options anymore, because bacteria became so much sophisticated, so much educated by us, thanks by us. Yeah, people educate them. They did a great job. But I think most of that happens because of uh, the antibiotics in cancer tree, which is in the environment where then those things can evolve for a you know, very, very rapid rate. Great point too. But the factor is here, I want to refresh a little your memory, one of the principles called dynamism. Well, that's a principle. What is dy dynamics, dynamics stands for? Nature and us, we have a dynamic, right? Pin pointer used to be my stick, now we put the light. My phone is this stuck, I have to move around, now we have a carrying around. Computers in my hand used to be bigger than this building. So macro goes to micro, and well, one of them, and dynamics, we, the dynamic, the chair, I just sat in this chair which I used to just stick to it, it moves your back getting dynamic. Nature has this. Pharmaceutical and technology has this. Pharmaceutical are static, all of them. You, any area you take in pharmaceutical, any, blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol related, arthritis, any, antibiotics, they're static. And they don't change at all. Maybe it's completely the same street. 
to then produce a hundred thirty cocktails that will evolve with the diseases. I agree. Great point. Good problem. Just uh, Dennis was the best Dennis. Remember? That's IT guy. Can you patent nature? No. Thank you. So, <laughs> you great point. Great point. But unfortunately, he said no. That's his fault. So, hey. the point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't write all the law. <laughs> the point is here. That's the answer to you. You're right. But he gave the answer. We cannot use it. You can use your dandelion. You can use. Uh, what do they call padarosi in English? I know what you call that. We put the herb and it hurt ourselves when we were kids. You put that herb and it cures it, gets your done. You put arnica. Use people arnica for pain. Can you patent it? Don't say it. You use they don't. They got it. You, you can patent the use. It's no. <laughs> uh, so the use you can have. You cannot patent it. Unless you create a chemical formula and change certain structure. We'll get there. That's what they come up with by the uh, hormones. So, back to reality. Antibiotics are here, polymixin right there, has a certain need, and has a billion dollars, million dollars, but it's gonna come to billions right here. So this is what we have, unfortunate future. From Scientific America, it wasn't me. They said, 10 million deaths each year by 2050. We said that already. 35.6 billion, billion amount antibacterial market will be reached by 2022. How soon? Very soon. Is that a good thing, bad thing? It means the problem is there. But look at the number, it doesn't make me happy. Oh, I'm gonna get the money, no. It's a problem. There's some sickness going on and it's not resolved yet. But we worked on it and we come up with a solution. 100 trillion will be lost in the global economy by 2050. It's not, we're talking about, it's US, it's like globally, we're talking about here. No joke. Well, we're working on some investors. <clears throat> we have some global uh, development bring to the clinical trials. It's not those trials really you want pharmaceutical growth to because we're already taking, repurposing, taking existing medication. They don't done trials. It should be shorter than if it comes up brand new uh, antibiotic or brand new innovation. Although it's, a, it's great innovation, but should we go to the shorter stage? And further clinical testing, we plan to do. We're seeking, you know, funding and ensure the testing are necessary for phase one trial by 2020, next year. And um, here we come. Well, <clears throat> what you see here is just tip of the nodule here. Those things I just brought it up on the screen. It's something. It's it's more than this. We have a, at least 23 projects upcoming done and already brought up to the scale to be functional. We just mentioned about polyvixin right now. That's our company research and development. We spoke about multi-drug resistance, which is Dr. Farber will step on it and bring it up to your attention. And hemostat, that's another project we're gonna discuss, it's on me. Uh, and tuberculosis, that's another one which we uh, try to wrap it up to apply to Melinda and Gates Foundation on the tuberculosis base. And uh, here we are, just few of us on the screen, but the behind is really great team which we would like to appreciate for the great job they've done. Any questions? Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned, um, you mentioned probably mixing, is there any, uh, is there any some resistance? Some, uh, yes. To it, and I'm assuming that the more that we drink, it's going to be more. What's right. the option after that? Excellent. Love this. So, great point. So, that's how we come up with trees again. Fast and solution, right? Mm -hmm. So, one option, the pharmaceuticals should hear us out. We've been going for all these conferences right now. We just started and at least start utilizing number one for the mixing in full dose. That's what you mentioned here, right? But you mentioned that about full dose, right? And when they start using full dose, the amount of resistant bacteria is gonna be still there, but not as much yet. At least they can save more people, and less bacteria will come up to the less, and not so fast 
less enough surface to be resisted. That's number one. That's number one. Number two, what to do with those who are misbehaving already? Great point. I don't want to step into Dr. Barber's speech. <laughs> he will mention to you much more, but keep that question and Dr. Farber will bring it up. What we're going to do is pull the mix in. The one already are under jeopardy to become put in the shadow. So you will mention that to you. But the first one, we're getting to the full dose, treated, necessary needs, functional for what it was created for, and eliminate at least to give us another five, hopefully four years, until not new but proper dynamic antibiotics will come up to it. Dynamic medications, that's, that's the goal. Next step would be working on. Can the bacteria be extracted from the body? Good point. Bacteria, bacteria, the way it's happening, you have to know the growth pattern of the bacteria. They have a lag phase, log, stationary, dead, you know, bacterial, that's the way nature made them functionality. In different stages, they have different size, different functionality. Plus, another problem with bacteria, they have a propendence to sit on the receptors, not all of them in the bloodstream. <coughs> They have attraction to the receptors to eliminate them from the body. Remember that word was hemoperfusion? They did from polymixin last one for the cleanup. That's the one they do like dialysis type thing. Dialysis, like they eliminate hemoperfusion. Right, like hemodialysis. They dialyze certain particles or toxins or uric acid, certain things. But bacteria are impossible almost to eliminate. And plus, another problem. Why are you doing a perfusion? The body, the person, has to survive that process. Not an easy process. It's a lot of energy used up from the patient to, to survive. It's a process of getting blood out. It's not that easy as it looks. It's uh, quite cumbersome. And guess I'm going to ask you something. You have a hospital, 600 beds, out of which three floors, 200 patients, infection, ICU. It's uh, very, they love this on the political level, cost effectiveness, not cost effective. They not even start. It's not cost effective. They're not going to accept that. That's number one, unfortunately. Cost effectiveness, and then you can move on. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Here we have cost effectiveness. We use cheap products, generic, they use already, and we're not increasing um, price of the We didn't create new one fancy. We use existing, but we make it work well, cost effective. But good point. Is there any way your team is a chief pathology specialist or all can talk to you about From the trees, right? Yes, I will be here at the trees come. My background, medical doctor. Tunnel, tunnel vision doctors. Not anymore. <laughs> That's why we have a tree so specialist. So how about the story of when you need to touch with the methodology? How about the efficiency? That's the way it works. Compared with the other. Great point. So let's I'll give you the example, right? Scenario. I come and I speak to team, we have meeting over Skype or conference. I say I had a bad day today, guys. I have a situation and news going on, all this bacteria going after us. And are you trying to survive the world? No, we're talking about it's a problem and it's called unmet needs, right? Before we go to met needs, they can wait. Unmet needs would need to be right now on the surface. And the scientists said, well, we can approach this way, we can have a uh, like you said, a perfusion of something, or we can have a antibiotic dosage-wise, what is done, this is done, we can approach through growth pattern and try to work with the uh, bacteria. Then tree specialist says, okay guys, I heard you now. Let's see how we can solve this problem, combining problem that medical field says on your scientific level, because just myself, I cannot solve it just pharmacists, chemists sitting, looking to the, uh, the microscope, 
We just can't complain, but cannot solve it, unless the team gets together. So Tree Specialist says, well, as per principle, and dynamis, or to the takeout, we have to take out the problem. Is the problem is this? Yes, negative. Hey, scientist, how can we take out? Now they start functional. They said, oh, we can take out by adding such and such. Oh, now you're functioning. Although, without trees, they wouldn't come up with this, to be honest. They will, 10 years later. But 10 million is gone. It might be more. Any other questions? How could you produce this on a laboratory scale? Do you have, how do you go to generic drug manufacturers or who members to Great. make this drug for Excellent. consumer use? Very good point. Very hard. Not easy. But doable. So, what's the next step? What's the marketing? Where we, how we speak out about, right? What we talk about. Great point. There's a few options there. Unfortunately, trees can help there, but not as much yet <laughs> to get to, because this is involved more marketing, more how uh, pharmaceuticals ready for it, because they all of them doing their own functionality, right? So one of the pharmaceutical in Sweden, we found out they're working on pulling mixing cleanups, clearing all kind of waste, and we approach to this idea and as you just said great point we just start working on it because we start coming up with this whole project from last year as we speak i mean we're working on it for years but in reality like physically uh time spending and effort just started we just had some errors to approach certain things but we learned only you can learn from errors right, right. you cannot learn from success you do but errors are better some point, it not, doesn't kill you. So those errors didn't kill us, make us stronger. So we came up with options how to um, present to them, how to speak to them, why? Just imagine, I like this word. If you don't imagine, you don't learn a functionality. Let's say you're a pharmacist, chemist. You've been working for the company 10 years. Maybe more, maybe just started, hired. You got salary, nice, sweet. <coughs> they put you in a certain mission to do, suddenly the guy comes and says to you, some outside presenting to your team, and you're the head of the department of pharmacy, right? And you have 300 people working for you. You're nice sitting in your chair on the computer in front of you and conducting. And he says to you, listen, Joe, I have a, uh, we have a great solution for you, for your company. This polemics that you're working for three years, five years, I hope we got the anecdote about the oil. So we can solve it within and and in within six months. How? We can do this, we can do that, we can do that. He thinking himself like this. Well, I got a budget, three million. I had I can live for another three, four years, nice and beautiful, doing what they told me to do. You're not gonna take your project, unfortunately. We faced with this already. Great point. It's like about the lawyer anecdote. Do I have a minute to speak about the lawyer anecdote there? <laughs> Dying lawyer, sorry. Everybody <laughs> died one day, right? Nine years old, great success. You know that anecdote, right? Yes, right? Yes. And you know, son, lawyer too, also successful. Very eager, emotionally, just win the world. That's always, we went through this, all of us, when we were younger. So. He runs to the dad, before you die, I want to tell you good, great news. I won the case. So which one? The one, you know, you had the issues for 20 years. Idiot. That's what worked for your education, for the house, for our trips, and for our future. Yeah. <laughs> that's the answer to your question. Sorry, it wasn't you. <laughs> but that's the anecdote. Does it make sense to you what I said? That's what we're facing right now. No, you might remember the book, The Clever Beginner, not by Brad Alon. That's so, right. So you read it? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so, but we, we're going to use trees now to, to do what? To grow the obstacles and solve this issue with those guys who are thinking, I got what I need, why, why should I bother, right? And we just wait, that's what we're away, 
yesterday we great meetings around here at Purdue universities and some professors and they did took us really really well so we're good getting there <laughs> but a great point trees it would be trees I wouldn't even figure it out I would be going to the same door <laughs> as everybody does to the same rock until I either kill myself or, or rock will break I, I think vice versa I'll, I'll be done by that time Yes, Not just but you have to utilize it smartly, <coughs> correct, at the right time, at the right moment. Mm. Do you have a question? Yes. yes. Can you describe this disease of your theory? What are these patients that are young, old? Yes. This it's a problem. It's any age. I'm not scary. Mm. It's in the news. It's funny. Brother-in-law, he's a computer programmer, he works in Smith Barney, one of the biggest in, in, the, in Manhattan, one strong company there. He's been a consultant. To become a consultant, you have to have a brain, not just employee. Let me tell you. If you, somebody computer programmer said I'm a consultant, he got a brain. So, and he's been in the field 35 years. And talked to him, I said, hey Greg, did you see that bacteria are <laughs> killed this? So what are you talking about? No, I didn't. It's run the first page every news. What I'm trying to tell you, why I said that. Because most of us, we see what we see, what we accomplish or what we're looking for. In reality, yes. If you look at it from today's lecture, if I leave something in your mind, and you start reading news right after that stop, you just open up any news, you will be surprised how many problems with bacteria is going on. They're talking about measles right now, it's uh, not that problem yet, but it is. Uh, they talk, let's say, a uh, patient came with, uh, for procedure, surgical procedure, any age, could be 30, 20 years old, hospital, about yeast infection was just recently, candidates, albicans, they were talking about, about uh, clinically, any age. The answer is, any age. Unfortunately, you, you have a point. You would assume younger patient person has a stronger immune system, right? More resistant, I'm eating well, I'm sleeping on, the, sleeping on time, it's not gonna touch me. Good point. Unfortunately, fortunately you're right, but unfortunately there's a two obstacles here. Chances, what our chances are. The chances somebody who has diabetes, hypertension, uh, older age, not really, depends what illnesses he has, right? Older age is not an issue, by the way. It's a matter of what you carry behind, what you have a nice, um, you didn't put the proper pill or receptors when you get the symptom, like diabetic hypertension or not mobile as much, overweight. Those guys getting catch up infection faster. Even at a younger age, people have diabetes, right? 30 years old, 20. It's not the age, it's matter those with illnesses or chronic illnesses, smokers, COPD, asthmatics, they catch infection very fast. The our chance to get healthy people, it's less, but it's not zero. So answer is, by 2050, your question not gonna be a question, gonna be answered, unfortunately. A lot of people will get infection not related to their illnesses. Just the fact you're doing the surgery, any surgeries, just appendectomy, you're young and healthy. Your immune system already downsized because the immune system only work in that spot. Every other organs are kind of in standby. And it's high risk on the hospital acquired infection. I always can say there's a word, hospital not for the sick people. Because it gets sicker. <laughs> so it's it's catching any age, but mainly those who are with the like comorbidities, additional illnesses involved. In. So the bacteria come from external from the outside from the infected, is that what you're saying? We are bacteria as a matter of fact. Okay, got it. Yeah. So we don't need so external bacteria. So you bacteria bad bacteria. You want our own bacteria, the good bacteria. There's no good or bad bacteria as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, you can read about studies that done about bacteria, which everybody chasing. C. difficile, it's a bacteria, Clostridium, which is called diarrhea, loose stool and stuff. It didn't come from nowhere, it's your own. Do, we, do you know we have our own Staphylococcus, people say MRSA. You heard this MRSA, right? They call it MRSA. 
Metisomes is a staphylococcus. We have it, it's ours. Outside bacteria, we cannot live without it. It's, it's a bacteria, it's a good thing. It makes our immune system alert all the time to be functional. Without bacteria, we cannot function. It's our, our helpers, as a matter of fact. And if Dr. Farr will give you the lecture, if you understand this, if you, let me say like this, if you beat someone all the time, will he love you or gonna hate you? Simple question like this. Will hate you, right? So if you, if you beat the bacteria and yell it on it and constantly go after it, you have to try to figure it out how to live with it in symbiotic world. That's a big crazy word either. It exists, you just have to understand uh, philosophy of the symbiotic world. When you feeling that you're getting illness, you have to, instead of saying, oh, I hate you, you created illness from you, you're wrong. You have to analyze what's the body done differently or what should I do additional to myself to work with this bacteria, why it hates me. Either you didn't sleep enough or you had long night of uh, partying, it's fine, yeah, this is another one, you said it. Yeah. <laughs> or, which is fine too, don't get me wrong. But you have to give a chance next day, reset. If you don't do it, you're constantly nagging it over and the body says, you know what, I don't like you. Just get sick, <laughs> sort of. It's sort of, but immune, it, can, it has to give, anything in the system has to give reset. There's no infinity, unfortunately, the battery too, right? It has to get recharged. If you don't recharge, but you have to analyze when to stop and recharge. So bacteria, same power, they need to recharge or figure it out how to live in the proper environment or even the probiotic that's the mention, it's a good bacteria, but you have to know when to use it. We have them. We have as a, as a doctor, we have them, all of those. It's just, the moment we do this balance, your own bacteria, forget about the environment, not even getting there yet. Your own bacteria can kill you so nicely, so you couldn't even imagine. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Any other questions? Yeah,